Hello math class, welcome back to another lesson. This is lesson one of the eighth unit. Uh, the eighth unit is titled proportional reasoning. So we're going to be talking about comparing uh, different numbers in different units. Uh, so if you go to the store and you're looking at turkeys, you know, uh, for Thanksgiving or Christmas and you're supposed to buy one and one says that it's uh, you know, six dollars per kilogram, and the other one says that it's two fifty per pound. Which one's a better deal? What is what does each of those mean? So we're going to learn how to compare those uh, rates essentially, and we're going to um, figure out how to transition between them. Uh, we're also going to talk about you know if you are in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, and how you um, can interchange between those. That's how the unit is going to start and then it will transition into something a little bit different but that is at least it for the first couple of lessons. So we're going to compare and interpret rates. We have some uh, definitions here. A uh, rate is a comparison of two amounts that are measured in different units. For example, someone might be able to type 240 words in eight minutes. So 240 words for eight minutes. Now, is that impressive? Is that not impressive? It's really hard to say. Usually what we do is we interpret the rate of typing in words in one minute, right? It's words per minute. So 240 words in eight minutes isn't exactly helpful, but a unit rate where the second unit is uh, a value of one, then that is often what we talk about, right? Miles per hour, uh, kilometers per hour, dollars per pound, dollars per kilogram, not dollars per 15 kilograms. That's a hard unit to work with. So instead we want words per minute and we would simply divide 240 by eight to get 30 words per minute. And that is a more useful unit for us. We can compare that uh, to other people. Words in one minute. Not every test will be eight minutes long, but each test will be at least one minute. So let's start just talking about these here. A uh, world-class sprinter can run 100 meters in about 9.8 seconds. If they could write, run at this rate for a longer period of time, estimate how far they could run in a minute. So the information that it gives us is that the sprinter runs 100 meters in 9.8 seconds. And that's not really a helpful unit, right? That is just a unit, but not a unit rate. Uh, we want to get the bottom number to be one, and to do that I divide 100 by 9.8 seconds to get 10.204 meters per second. So now I have this in a unit rate and something that I can use much more easily because I know how many seconds there are in a minute. I don't know how many 9.8 seconds there are in a minute, unfortunately. As much as I would like to claim I can, I don't. But I know how many uh, seconds there are in one minute. It's 60. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our unit rate, 10.204 meters per second, and we're going to write a bracket here. And what we're going to do is we're going to write it so that units cancel out. And what I want is meters per minute instead of seconds. So to cancel out seconds, I'm going to have the unit seconds on the top. And I want the unit minutes on the bottom. Now in one minute, there is 60 seconds. So I can now multiply 10.204 meters by 60 to get how many um, meters per minute this individual would be able to run at that speed. So that would be 612 meters per minute. Okay, so that makes sense, right? That number is going to be larger. In more seconds, you're going to be able to run more meters. So that number is 612 meters per minute. Question B asks us an hour. How far could they run in an hour? Well, now I have that this number of 612 meters per minute, I know how many minutes there are in an hour. So I take 612 meters per minute. And again, I'm going to do some brackets. 
because I'm changing and converting units. So I want meters per hour. So that means that hour is going to have to go on the bottom and minutes on the top to cancel out. I know in one hour there are 60 minutes. So it's going to be 612 times 60, which gets us 36,734 meters per hour. Obviously, that's not possible because, um, you know, no one can run that fast for a whole hour. But theoretically, that's how far the sprinter would be able to go. Let's do C. So now we have three, six, seven, three, four meters in an hour. And I want to know how many meters this person would be able to go in a day. I know how many hours there are in a day, 24. So I'm going to fill my brackets with my line. Hours is going to cancel out the hours, so it goes on top. Days goes on the bottom. So it is 24 hours in one day. This number times 24 gets us 881632 meters per day. And if I want to get that into a little bit more of a usable unit, I could divide it by 1,000 to get kilometers per day. So I would get 881.63 kilometers per day. So we can take units, and as long as we know uh, the conversion factor, if you will, we can convert into another unit. It's really important that we draw our brackets, we draw the line, and we write our units to figure out what would cancel out. Because seconds on the bottom and seconds on the top cancels out here minutes and minutes here, hours and hours here. So you're left with uh, these units in the end. If you have questions about the units and where you need to write them, please let me know. Uh, but we'll jump right in to the first uh, true example here. So we're going to compare two rates expressed in different units. Natasha can buy 12 kilogram turkey from her butcher for $42.89. The supermarket has turkeys advertised in its flyer for $1.49 per pound. There are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. Which store has the lower price? Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to say that the butcher has uh, like in 12 kilograms is going to be approximately equal to $43. I'm just going to um, round that real quick just to make it simpler and then for the supermarket I'm also going to round the 149 to a dollar fifty per pound okay I'm just going to make it as simple as I can uh, because a couple of cents here and there uh, shouldn't matter if they're within a couple of cents just go what's closer to you or what's more convenient uh, so what I can do is I can take this dollar and fifty cents per pound and I can find out how many dollars it is per kilogram because I'm told that there are 2.2 pounds in a kilogram so I'm gonna draw my brackets with my line and I want to cancel out pounds so it goes on top and I want kilograms so it goes in the bottom here these will cancel I know that in one kilogram there's 2.2 pounds so I'm going to multiply dollar fifty by 2.2 to get not sure. Let's punch this into my calculator. I didn't do it yet. Oh, the suspense. Okay, so we'll do 1.5 times 2.2 equals 3.3 dollars .3 per kilogram. And now I want to find out how many dollars 12 kilograms is. So I can take that uh, Let's go 3.3 dollars per kilogram and find out how many is in 12 kilograms. So I would need to multiply by 12 kilograms. These would cancel and I would get how many dollars that would cost. So 3.3 multiplied by 12, 39.6. That is $39.60 is what that means. So if I compare that to the amount for $12, at, or 12 kilograms at the butcher, that means that the supermarket is less expensive. So 
less expensive at the supermarket. Of course, there is multiple ways you can do this. You could take the 12 kilograms for $43 and um, you know, find out how many dollars per pound it is, if you would like to. Let us move on to example two. So just a heads up, in this space, it might be a slightly cramped. So just be prepared to write a little bit smaller um, than some of you usually would. Um, I want to remind us that of a formula that we always used um, in our previous class. Uh, in grade 10 math, we used the slope is equal to rise over run. So we're going to use that in this problem. As you can see, we have a graph. Oh, yay, graphs. Um, so let's use it. What we want to do is we want to describe a scenario that could be represented by the graph. Uh, and do this by comparing the rates that are shown. So we're going to calculate the rate uh, with each line. And we are going to then make up a little story for it. So we are talking about distance uh, or kilometers in minutes. So let's do the first section from time 0 to time 30. So for section 1. From time 0 to time 30. Uh, let's see, our rise is from point 0.2 to point 0.1. It would be 2 minus 0, right? If we go from here and here, uh, y2 minus y1, so 2 minus 0, divided by x2 is 30 and x1 is 0. So that means that this person went two kilometers in 30 minutes. So that's not a super fast pace. Uh, if we uh, take this and we multiply it by 60, let's see, this would be 60 minutes over one hour, we would find out that he was going four kilometers per hour. So definitely not driving anywhere maybe walking, maybe dawdling, I'm not sure, but going fairly slow. For section two, from time 30 minutes to 40 minutes, the rise is the same. It is two in the second point and two in the first point. And the run is the same, uh, or sorry, not the same, it is 40 minus 30. We have to travel like through some period of time. So what we get is we get zero divided by 10 which is equal to zero kilometers per hour. So during these 10 minutes, this individual was stationary. They were not moving, um, generally speaking. Section three, we have a distance of five kilometers uh, for our second Y point and a distance of two for our first, so five minus two. And then the time is 60 subtract 40. 60 for our uh, second time, 40 for our first. That is three kilometers in 20 minutes. And again, you can find out how many kilometers per hour that is. And here, that is nine kilometers per hour. So a little bit quicker than before, pretty much double the pace uh, of the first section. And the fourth section, fourth section has us going from uh, five to zero. So y2 is zero and y1 is five. So zero minus five. And then for time, it is 65. Uh, so they go travel this distance in five minutes from 65 minus 60. So that gets us, let's see, minus five. So minus five over five. So that is one, let's see, kilometer per minute. Okay, that feels faster. Let's convert it into something that is more useful for us. 60 minutes in one hour gets us negative. I have to have a negative here as well. Negative 60 kilometers 
per hour. So in this one, I'm thinking that maybe they were in a vehicle. And the reason that it's negative is because they were going back the other way. So here's what I can come up with for a story here. Uh, maybe we've got a person uh, starts at time zero and they're at the store. So they're at the store and they realize that they cannot afford something. So what they're going to do is they're going to walk home from the store. Uh, maybe it is like they want to rent a movie back in the 90s. So um, they walk home from the store. That's, from, that's section one. They're going fairly slow. They were going four kilometers per hour. So that's not very quick at all. That'd be a walking pace maybe. And when they get home from the store, they grab their skateboard. Grab skateboard and go to friend's house. So I guess that would actually be grab the skateboard would be two and go to friend's house would be three. And where I get that from is because like they're at home, maybe you grab a snack um, while you're at home going zero kilometers per hour. And you grab your skateboard, you know, you're at home, you're not moving. And your skateboard goes, you know, pretty much double what you can walk, nine kilometers per hour. So you walk home from the store, grab your skateboard, and then ride your skateboard to your friend's house, at which point, you hop in the car and you drive back to the store to buy whatever you were missing. So um, get in car and drive to the store. Maybe your friend has a few bucks to chip in. Um, so you may be asked to you know, interpret the rates of a graph and kind of make up a story like this. There's no necessarily wrong story as long as there's some reasoning behind it, as I had kind of mentioned. Um, you know, the distances or the, the speeds that they were traveling at those times for the reasons they chose what they were doing. I think we have one more problem. Yeah, one more. So this soon involves a uh, gas tank of Mario's new car. So we're going to consider fuel efficiency here. The gas tank of Mario's new car has a capacity of 55 liters. The owner's manual claims that the fuel efficiency of his car is 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers, not a unit rate. Kind of iffy. That is the unit that Canadians talk about uh, gas mileage in, and it is not a unit rate. It is just a rate. Um, so it is a little bit more difficult to work with. Before his first road trip, he sets his trip meter to zero kilometers so he could keep track of the total distance he drove. He started with the gas tank full. Each time he stopped to fill up the tank, he recorded the distance he had driven and the amount of gas purchased. On which leg of his trip was his fuel efficiency best? So we're given a table, fill up one, fill up two, total distance that he traveled, uh, and the liters of fuel that he used. So we're going to talk about fill up one first, okay? First of all, he used 48 liters of gas to drive 645 kilometers. So what that is, it equals 0 0.074 liters every kilometer. And this is not a useful, um, this is a tough unit to read as well, which is why we use 100 kilometers. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 100 to get liters for 100 kilometers. So that would actually equal 7.4 liters for 100 kilometers. There is no excellent solution for the way that we talk about gas mileage here. So the first trip, he got 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers. That is less than, uh, or that is better fuel mileage than what the manual said he should get. So that's pretty okay. The second leg of the trip, the distance that he traveled is the distance, but like what his current odometer says and what it said the last time it filled up. So his distance in this trip is 1037 subtract 645 kilometers. So that would equal 392, sorry, 392 kilometers traveled in that leg of the trip. He used 32.1 liters of fuel. So we take 32.1 
liters divided by 392 kilometers. That gets us 0 0.081 liters per kilometer. Multiply everything by 100 to get 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers. So you can say for sure that leg one of the trip had better fuel mileage. Leg one of the trip had better fuel mileage. If you guys have any questions about any of that, please let me know. Uh, send me an email, stop me in class. But thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.